Sportsbit is powered by Bet Online, driving the opening odds market since 2001. Visit sportsbookreview.com to learn more about Bet Online and its A plus rated platform in the link below. Big game breakdown the Wizards and the Pistons in Detroit Friday night on ESPN. Washington, one and a half road favorite, one and a half point road favorite, 208 the total. We've seen nothing but Wizards money from the opener here. A lot of twos are popping up right now uh, as I record early on Friday morning for the Washington Wizards. All right, so a lot of talk about what's happening at the top of the Eastern Conference standings with the Cleveland Cavaliers looking more and more vulnerable with every game. There's also going to be a bottle, a battle over the second half of the season for the final playoff spots, the bottom of the Eastern Conference. Look at the standings right now. You have the Wizards, Pacers, Bucks, Sixers, Pistons, and Knicks all in the mix. This is a Wizards team that like a month ago was talking about a number two or a number three seed. Now, only a couple of games from being out of the playoffs entirely. Uh, you know, with Detroit uh, sitting at number nine, uh, and they're, what, two games behind Washington. It's been an ugly slide for the Wizards. Two and four straight up, 0 oh and six against the spread in their last six ball games, and they've lost against the spread by 70 points in regulation, nearly 12 points per game. They haven't been getting beaten. They've been getting annihilated by the point spread in recent contests. So what happened to the Wizards? Last week, they lose outright at home to Utah. The owner, Ted Leonis, he wasn't pleased. They're playing like they're too cool for school, he said after the game. And then, you know, owner's calling you out. What happens the next game? They come out against Charlotte, and they had nothing. To, <laughs> allowed the, Charlotte to make their first 10 shots uh, of the game. Lost 133 to 109. You wonder if it was a rock bottom type of moment. The starting lineup for Washington benched for the entire fourth quarter of that contest. Scotty Brooks, quote, it's unacceptable the way we competed. We're going to have to change some things and make sure we're all going to compete. If not, we're going to have to find guys who are going to compete. In theory, this does feel like a step-up spot for Washington. If they're capable of stepping up, you wonder if the chemistry on this team has grown stale and if there are more issues in the locker room than we're hearing about, uh, it's certainly in the mainstream media. But from a are we going to show up tonight perspective, this is a statement game for Washington. If they show up, it's worth noting. If they don't show up, it's worth noting. Pistons have been in a really rough run themselves. I mean, they've had a brutal scheduling stretch. This is their 16th court change in their last 17 ball games. So you're talking about no home stands, no time to rest in your beds. No consistent practice time, all of that for Detroit during this tough scheduling stretch. And of course, they're doing it with injuries. I mean, significant injuries. When you talk about the starting point guard, Reggie Jackson, uh, being hurt uh, throughout. But now, right here, is the end of this brutal stretch. You know, they played 19 of the last 30 on the road, 16 court changes the last 17. Now they get four straight at home. They get back-to-back -back days off next week. Ten of their next 11 at home. The only road trip to Cleveland, which is, a, you know, Detroit uh, to Cleveland, is the shortest road trip you can find uh, in the NBA, except for the Knicks playing the Knicks or something, and the Nets playing the Knicks and the like. Uh, but there's a chance here for the Pistons, perhaps, to make a move. They ran out of gas late uh, against Toronto on Wednesday, 96-91 to 91 loss. They didn't get the money uh, in that contest. And you talk about the injuries. I mean, only Tobias Harris has started every game. For Detroit this year. Here's a quote from Stan Van Gundy. It's been tough. John Lauer, Reggie Jackson have been the two big ones, but Stanley Johnson's been down longer than we thought. But I wouldn't say it's like we're the only ones that have ever gone through this. The injury's bad for Detroit, but you know, the injuries are going around the NBA. Uh, I'm sure the Doc Rivers would trade an injury situation uh, with Stan Van Gundy right about now. Here's Andre Drummond, who really looks like he's making, taking that next step in a lot of ways of this season for the Pistons. He's leading the NBA 15 rebounds per game. His scoring is up 14 and a half points. And if they're going to make the playoffs, they're going to make a run of the playoffs. The biggest issue for Drummond is can you keep him on the floor down the stretch of these tight games? Because Hack and Andre, Hack and Andre has been something that has worked. When you look at the free throw percentages over the course of his career, not just bad, worse than Shaq bad 
as bad as it gets bad. Look at this year. He's gotten better. Is it real? Or is it just one of these blips? Right now, we have to view it as real. Andre Drummond may well be the best player on the floor tonight, although John Wall might have something to say with about that. It would be Wizards or pass for this better. I'm probably going to pass the game. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry-leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.